This is the new 2024 Mobula 6 with the HD0 Eco camera and VTX. And what's unique about that is it's using an analog HD signal rather than the fragile MIPI cable that we normally have between the camera and the VTX. And with that, it becomes more durable, a little bit lighter, and maybe most importantly, it's a lot cheaper. So this thing has been an interesting drone for me to think about. The video quality is just not as good as the MIPI qual cameras. And it's not necessarily because of the AHD interface. No, I think it's because the camera is actually a very, very low cost camera, like we're used to flying with analog. But I found that I really, really like flying this drone, and I really like the unique super wide field of view that I get from this really wide FOV lens. I don't know for certain, but I think this is a very similar, if not exact lens, to what we have on the Tiny Woo Pinch camera, which is beloved by most of the micro drone world, as far as I know. So think of it this way. This is kind of like a low cost HD zero whoop with a camera that has a similar field of view and feel to the tiny whoop pinch camera. So right off the bat, if what you're looking for is best image quality, it's going to be the Nano V3 that's right here. This is a very, very impressive camera, but it is a lot more money uh, and the MIPI cable is also a little bit fragile. But if you're looking for something that's fun to fly and very low cost, very similar cost, honestly, to what we are used to with analog, this is what you want. And I find flying this indoors is so fun. The reason I find flying this indoors fun is because the wide field of view makes it so much easier to navigate around the space quickly and with confidence. It's also pretty light and it's this nice 65 millimeter frame, which makes it easier to fly indoors also. That's not to say this can't fly outdoors. Actually, I found that the tune on this handles wind really well and it flies outdoors almost better than some of my 75 millimeter builds. Yeah. This is actually one of my favorite drones to fly. Just know that the video quality isn't as nice as what I'm getting on the Nano V3. No, what I'd say is this is a lot like um, what we're getting out of our lighter weight Mobile Runcam Nano 3 camera that you see here, but at a higher resolution and a much more stable picture. So the main thing I see is there's not these uh, brightness flickers that we get in analog. It's very consistent and that's quite nice on the eyes, honestly. The other thing is that it's not interlaced. Uh, the video coming out of this is interlaced video, uh, which can cause some stair stepping on jagged edges. And um, if I wasn't using the HD zero goggle, then the video wouldn't be as nicely deinterlaced as it is on my goggle. So that's what you're getting out of this is progressive scan 720p video. And out of here, you're getting uh, 480i, or you can kind of think of it as uh, 240p, 60fps. So if the video quality is similar to analog, and I'll admit it is definitely a step down from what we get out of the nice wide dynamic range cameras that we have on HD zero MIPI cameras, then why would anyone get this? Well, it's the reasons I mentioned about the image being uh, progressive scan and a little bit higher resolution. The other reason, and this is, you know, a little bit of an odd thing, is that there's an analog uh, chip shortage. So if you didn't know already, there's basically one company that we all buy analog chips from, and that's Richwave. Richwave makes the analog chips that we put on the VTXs, the AIOs, all these things. And right now there's a big chip shortage on those particular chips. And we don't know when it's going to uh, become less of a problem. But what you should see is that it is harder to find analog VTXs in the coming future. So keep that in mind. 
So let's take a close look at this thing. We've got some 0702 28,000 kV motors. So these really help keep this thing agile. I found it to be a very agile quad, a lot more agile than the previous Mobula 6 with HD0. And then we've got some tri-blade tri props, I think from Gemfan here. And there is a A30 connector, I believe this is. Uh, the main thing that's important to me on that is it supports my favorite standard, which is the BT 2.0 plug. So this is uh, backwards compatible with BT 2.0, and I recommend using these nice uh, Weebleed FPV folded cell batteries or some tiny whoop uh, batteries. Let's see if I got one here. Yep, so this is a tiny whoop battery. Um, I believe they're the same construction, just with a different label on them. The important thing is that uh, they're the nice folded cell technology that gives you better performance. And then up top, we've got the VTX, and you can see if you look close right here, that we just have some standard analog looking uh, connections. So we have power, ground, and then video, and then the ability to change settings on the camera with this white wire. And then that routes, just like an analog camera, into the back of the VTX, in, into the back of the camera rather. And you can see it's just soldered in there. Now, that definitely simplifies things, because normally the MIPI cable would be handling the power and the data. Um, now we've got just these simple wires that we can shorten or lengthen uh, to our heart's desire. If I needed to run a, a long uh, cable or something on a, on a flying wing, uh, this would make that a lot more economical. Interesting stuff for sure. So, yeah, other than that, it's basically a standard looking HD0 VTX. You've got the DiviMath chip here, um, and then the other DiviMath chip that we see on all the VTXs. Uh, missing from this is gonna be the MIPI cable, uh, or sorry, the MIPI uh, interface chip, um, because it's not needed anymore. So, interesting stuff. And then on the bottom, we have uh, motor plugs, so if you wanted to experiment with swapping out these motors for a different KV, you could do that easily. Or if you wanted to shave some weight, I did see someone on Facebook, I think it was Anthony Knight, he uh, wanted to see how much weight he could take off of this Whoop, because um, right now it's 23 grams, and I think he got it down to about 20 grams, and I'm guessing he took the motor plugs off and did some other normal tricks like maybe a Ren, Rennie screws right here rather than metal screws. So you can get this down pretty light and it will perform uh, very similar, um, if not better, with the plugs removed. Uh, and then that uh, reduced weight of course helps a lot. But I found in its current configuration it is uh, more than capable. I did not feel like the weight was holding me back. So it's a fun quad to fly. So in conclusion, do I recommend this? Yes. However, you have to know that the price is lower and the video quality is lower. If you want absolute best image quality, then you can pay more and get something with the Nano V3. However, if you want a basher, something that's just fun to throw around and not worry about as much, a lot more like a traditional analog quad would be, the lower cost on this makes a big difference. It's only $150 to get this, where I believe the analog version is somewhere around $120. So that's a $30 bump, and now you get the benefits of HD0 video. I think it's worth the trade-off, and give it a try yourself. One last thing here, here's my recommended camera settings. One of the cool things with this camera, of course, is that you can change the settings. So what you're going to do is um, yaw right for three seconds. That'll open up the main menu. And then in AE, I want to set it to brightness of 45. By default, I think it's 30. 
and then FLC for the exposure mode. Of course, you can play with this if you want, um, but FLC worked the best and I believe is the default. And then in image enhance, uh, we're gonna wanna change a few things. Contrast at uh, default 10, but we wanna bump the sharpness. You can see this can make a huge effect. And the default is 10. We're gonna wanna be around 15 or maybe a little bit higher, you know, to taste. And then I also bumped the saturation down one notch or two on saturate and then R SERP. And then 2D uh, DNR, I think is uh, 2D noise reduction. Uh, so you can play around with that. Uh, default is gonna be 10, of course. Um, a little bit higher is gonna clean up some of the noise that you see in the image. You can also flip the camera in this menu.